how to start a medical YouTube channel. So three to four minutes of footage will probably take you about 10 hours and you probably won't make any money on YouTube at all for about 18 months and should aim to release a video a week. So 18 months times four weeks in a month times 10 hours per episode is 720 hours before you start making any money on YouTube. But if I was to work that much in a walk-in clinic that pays about 90 pounds an hour as a doctor, well 90 pounds times 720 hours is a staggering 64,800 pounds. So if despite this you still haven't stormed out of your room with stethoscope and GMC number in hand to your nearest walk-in clinic, let me share with you a super easy five-step approach to getting this YouTube side gig going for you as a medic. Number one, what? So you want to start a YouTube channel or Instagram account or even a dreaded dance crazy TikTok account, but you just don't know what to post about. And in your extensive pre-starting research, you have just realized that your breakthrough idea of posting photos of cute little kitties with funny captions has been done to death already. You are not alone. Coming up with a good channel idea is one of the first and most difficult hurdles you will need to overcome in your journey to YouTube fame. The key here is to look within yourself Yourself. What makes you unique? What sets you apart from everyone else? And let me help you out here. So firstly, you are a medic or you have some kind of interest in health or medicine, and that can really help narrow things down for you. Secondly, if you are a bit more advanced in your career, you might already have a specialty or a special interest. Maybe you're an ENT doctor, or you're into lifestyle medicine, or skin, or cardio, respiratory, or gynae, or maybe even the most fashionable, wonderful world of the menopause. The knowledge you have acquired over the years can easily translate into watchable material. But before you start describing the effect of premature ovarian insufficiency, on the excretion of follicle stimulating hormone by the pituitary gland, you need to make one crucial decision. Is your channel patient facing or doctor facing? And you have to understand there is a massive difference between the two and realize that they both come with their own inherent advantages and disadvantages. Number one is reach. And there are approximately 9.2 million doctors in the world. And I hate to break it to you, but it is possible that not everyone will subscribe to your channel. So your reach will naturally be more limited by having a doctor facing channel. Channel. On the other hand, there are 7.9 billion people in the world, of which 4.66 billion are thought to have access to the internet, and out of those, it's quite likely that most of them will require or want to access medical advice at some point in their lives. So by going patient-facing, your reach will be much wider. Number two is comments. And before I started my medical YouTube channel, I found 10 other doctors in the YouTube sphere and started watching and analyzing their channels and their most popular videos. A recurring theme became Came quite evident. Those that were patient facing, and especially those that decided to take part in spreading medical information about that whole COVID thing, if you can remember that one, were getting hundreds of thousands of views and comments. Sadly though, a lot of the comments struck me as either being completely irrelevant or sometimes even being quite nasty. So I mean, especially with a topic as controversial as COVID, if you do decide to give medical advice or express your opinion, be prepared to have to defend your position, which may be something that will wear you out in the end. Number three is competition. And there are a lot of really good YouTube channels that are run by doctors that are patient facing. And that is because they recognize the reach potential with a channel like this. But I haven't really seen too many channels that were purely doctor or other healthcare professional focused ones. So something that you could consider is deciding on a niche, which in my opinion is a really good idea at the start of your journey, because it will give you focus from the start, even if the drawback is less views initially. So if you think of my personal favorite medical YouTube YouTuber in the world, Ali Abdel. He started off being focused on medical stuff, but then that became mainstream when he started reviewing Apple products that could help students in their medical school journey, which also appealed to non-medics. Right, so you've decided on your channel's profile, let's talk content. As a medic, you will by and large fit into the education or entertaining education category, if that even exists, of course. So start off with talking about things that interest you and that you are passionate about. And even better, if you can show people how to solve problems that you have encountered in your role as a medic. So scratching an itch, which refers to this exact concept, will not only make your followers really grateful, but will also help all medics as a whole, which in turn will help us to provide better patient care. That's a win-win. At this point, the most important thing you need to do 
is just get started. Having a YouTube channel is literally all about making mistakes. And I'm saying this as someone who did a three-year degree in sound engineering after med school, and also someone who loves tech, and also someone who loves being overprepared. So you will always notice something slightly off after you publish your videos, and you just need to learn to live with it. And if you are wondering how many times you will need to learn to live with your mistakes, the answer is 35. So just accept that your first 35 videos will be sh but don't stress about not going viral with your first or second video. Now, come to think of it, don't stress about not going viral at all. You can have a really fun and successful YouTube experience with even 10 engaging followers. Although, if you follow through to the end of this video, there is literally no chance that your subscriber count will remain in double digits. So just get started. Number two is how, and this will all depend on how techy you are. There are medical YouTubers out there with hundreds of thousands of subscribers relying only on footage from their iPhones. Now, what I'm gonna say here may sound slightly strange and uncomfortably personal, but I feel visuals do play a role here. So what I mean by that is if you are super hot, and you will probably know if you are super hot or not by now, just grab your phone into your hand and go for it. But for all of us normal people out there, well, you will need two extra things. One is a way to stabilize your camera, so a tripod, either for your phone or your DSLR camera. And the second is some source of lighting to light up your face. And a good idea is to just pop yourself in front of a window, allowing daylight to naturally brighten up your face. Otherwise, you probably won't go wrong with one of those ring lights that may even be attached to your tripod. No no one is going to watch a video with your face hidden in the shadows regardless of how amazing your content might be. Constant shaking will also get quite distracting, so with those two things sorted, you will already be at a good starting point. And when you are ready to one-up with production value, add in an external microphone of some description. Obviously, I'm a sound guy, so I could probably go on about this for hours, but a lot of people either use a lav mic, which are the clippy black ones you see TV presenters wearing, and the one I'm going to put in the description is a good cheap option that will plug directly into your microphone input and should be better than your built-in mic. But if you want more, feel free to check this out. Hopefully that's the tech bit sorted. Let's quickly talk about your Shakespearean delivery. If you are a natural speaker and you will know by now if you are or not, just write up some bullet points with what you will be talking about and go for it. But again, for all of us normal people out there, you may actually want to write up a word by word script. For any of you guys out there that have needed to video record yourself consulting with patients, you will very quickly notice that as you are thinking about what you want to say, you may have some nervous tics that you are not aware of. So you might do a lot of ums or ahs, or in my case, rights, which unless you are a pro at video editing will start to get really tiring for people watching your videos. As you get good at doing videos with scripts, there is no reason why you can't transition into just going for it with bullet points. Number three is why. Now that we have covered the what and the how, shall we quickly talk about the why? Why do you want to start a YouTube channel? And more importantly, is it okay to say money? And the answer to that is yes. Not that you needed my permission, of course, but I started my YouTube channel because I thought it would make me rich. And not just rich rich, but like flying business class everywhere rich. Something that sadly, my career as an NHS doctor will simply not allow me to do. Don't get me wrong, doctors make really good money and I'm not complaining here, although I'm starting to get the sense that this is sounding a bit like complaining. It's actually sounding a lot like complaining. But if money is your main driver, let's find out if starting a YouTube channel is worth it money-wise. So first, establish what your hourly rate is as a doctor, and that will depend on your grade. And to see how much you will be earning throughout your career as a doctor in the UK, click on the link on the screen now. I'm a GP, so hourly locum rates for GPs are really good. Think about 80, 90, or even 100 pounds an hour pre-tax, national insurance, and pension contributions. Now, how long does it take me to make a three, four minute YouTube video? Well, let's see. Research, writing the script, setting up my gear, doing at least two, if not three takes to choose from, cleaning up the A-roll, recording, incorporating B-rolls, extra editing, color grading, mixing, mastering, final export, revision, export again, YouTube thumbnail, keyword exploring, adding descriptions, and then sharing on social media sites. Uh, are you sure you still want to make videos? Uh, let's be clear here. As explained in the start of the video, I just gave up 64,800 pounds to do bad dad jokes whilst talking about Emus over the last 18 months. Was it worth it? Well, I guess we would have to ask my dependents about that.
Number four is when, and this before last bit refers to something I already touched on, and that is consistency. So to quote Ali Abdel again, he says the key to his success is quantity over quality. So churn out as many videos as you can consistently, and over time you will build a following and become successful. If you add in quality on top of that, that process will happen much faster of course. You will need to find a good balance here to avoid burning out, and so a simple formula that I would recommend, and that a lot of YouTubers are talking about as well is one video a week for 18 months. And if you do that consistently, the idea is money will start coming in. One video a week gives you enough time to research ideas, write scripts, spend time on editing, and also watch back your videos and pick up on mistakes that you can fix in subsequent videos further down the line. So something that I actually did was split things up into 10 video blocks with four week breaks to recover after each block. So this approach just seemed much more manageable and sustainable for me. So definitely something to consider. But again, we are all different and I would certainly see engagement drops in those four week break periods. So that may or may not suit you. Number five is red flags. And let's wrap this up with some red flags. So things to avoid when starting a medical YouTube channel. And again, this is simply a guide. There are no hard and fast rules. And so just do whatever you want really. But hopefully some of these might resonate with you. Number one is video length. And in my opinion, especially when you are starting out, the shorter, the better. A pop song length YouTube video is perfect because we all have shorter and shorter attention spans, but also less and less time to really invest in watching something without even knowing if we will get any value from it in the end. So keep videos short and sweet. And number two, to the point. Get straight into it. Avoid really long intros and introducing yourself with all of your various degrees, placements you've done, audits, quality improvement projects, extra courses, and so on. I remember clicking on an RCGP video and realizing that the actual content, so the value to the viewer, only started after 10 minutes of introductions from the experts, at which point I clicked away, and probably in spite. <laughs> so if you want to introduce yourself, do it quick. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Mike, a GP working in Manchester, UK. Done. Number three is avoid doing it completely on your own. Reach out to other medics that are also dabbling in social media. Maybe even hire someone to help you and work as a sounding board for ideas. So this will stop you from getting lonely and keep you energized and driven on this long journey. And if you are feeling lost and lonely, get in touch. Maybe we can help each other out too. That's it guys. I hope that was informative and who knows, maybe was exactly what you were looking for. Feel free to contact me, leave a comment, send me an email, and most importantly, grab your phone right now and just start recording. Otherwise, as always, good luck.